Welcome back to another Film Geek Movie Spotlight, and welcome back to another Film Geek Halloween Special. This month, every Wednesday, I will be posting a new movie spotlight that has something to do with the horror film industry to get everybody all revved up for my favorite holiday, Halloween. If some of you haven't noticed, they maybe you have, I have gotten some new ink on my arm here. Uh, it's because I am currently working on a Halloween-themed sleeve, and I'm building it piece by piece. Um, I believe my tattoo artist referred to this as a pork chop sleeve. Just different things that kind of small bits and pieces that get put together. I don't know if that's right or not, but I think that's what she called it, a pork chop or something like that. But anyways, guys, I love the holiday Halloween. It's one of, well, it is. It's my face, my favorite time of the year. It's the best day of the year. And you can look that up. Halloween is the best. So in spirit of the festivist of holidays, I am going to be doing Stephen King films every Wednesday. My movie spotlight this year is going to be Masters of Horror. Last year I talked about John Carpenter. This year I'm going to do everything Stephen King related. And just to show off his wide variety of different types of horror films, I've tried to find some that are all very different from each other. So I am kicking things off with one that I considered a very underrated film, and that is 19 93's Needful Things. Signed to my good friend, uh, Brian. Wait a minute, Brian, th th that's my name. That's impossible. Your best wishes, Mickey Mantle. Now close your eyes, Brian. Close your eyes. <laughs> How much would you pay for this car, Brian? Mm -hmm. Needful Things is directed by Fraser C. Heston. That's right, Charlton Heston's son. And it's starring Ed Harris, Max von Sydow, Bonnie Bedella, and Amanda Plummer. A mysterious man opens an antique store in Castle Rock, Maine. And this antique store is really unique because it seems to be filled with these very nostalgic items for all of the citizens of Castle Rock. And all this mysterious man wants for a payment is a small prank. The setting of Needful Things is the fictional town of Castle Rock, Maine that was created by Stephen King. It's also the setting for several other of his books and films. Just to name a few of the films, Stand By Me in 1986, The Dead Zone in 1983, Cujo in 1983, and The Dark Half in 1993. And after the release of Stand By Me, the film production company Castle Rock Entertainment was named after the fictional town. Castle Rock Entertainment is partially owned by Rob Reiner, who directed the film adaptation of Stand By Me in 1986. Then the film company was created in 1987. Needful Things was released August 27th, 1993, and it grossed about $15.1 million on an estimated $21 million budget. So yeah, this movie really flopped at the box office, and uh, critics have not been very kind to this movie. It is also sitting at Rotten Tomato at a 31%. Okay guys, now this film is of course not without its flaws. The movie does suffer from poor pacing. It moves very slow for a film of this sort. It's also very long. This movie clocks in right around two hours. And to be perfectly honest, a movie like this at most should only clock in at about an hour and 45 minutes, not a two hour long film. This movie isn't a slow burn. This film just kind of gets a little boring in spots. There's also some long shots and there's some things that could definitely Definitely be cut in this film to you know get a much shorter runtime. Also, too, uh, it suffers from this thing where it's like some very goofy Stephen King made-for-TV movie acting mixed in with seasoned veteran actors that do a great job. So that I feel kind of throws the tone of this film off. If this one, you know, is this one of Stephen King's goofball funny films made for TV with a little bit of horror? Or is this more of a serious horror thriller? The film has a tendency to bounce around a little bit, and so it could be a bit unnerving at times. Now, that being said, it's not a bad movie. Don't get me wrong. 
Um, it also has a bad tendency to not build its characters too much. For instance, it does suffer from the whole, like, cannon father, you know, deaths for death's sake. And you never really get to know these characters very well, or their motivations very well, and I feel that that also drags the film down, especially when you have a two-hour, you know, runtime. Okay, all of that negativity aside, this film does have a lot of really good things going for it that makes it really good to sit down and watch this Halloween. Number one, right out the gate, the movie isn't set during Halloween, but it is set during the fall-ish. It could be right before Halloween, or it could be after, like, that spot in between Halloween and Thanksgiving. It's kind of unsure what time of the year it takes place, except for the fact that some green, you know, some t trees are turning yellow and red, so, you know, it's obviously at fall, so it kind of puts you in that Halloween fall spirit. Also, I love the use of nostalgia in this film. I like how the the devil character uses people's nostalgia against them to make them do just horrific things, but really not so much. What he does is he asks people to do a certain prank, and then those pranks escalate to the whole goddamn town trying to murder each other in the streets. Okay, sorry. Small little spoiler. Now, this is also a not-too-scary Halloween-ish horror film. There isn't a lot of jump scares in the movie. It doesn't really get too awful dark and gritty. And the violence in the film, while there is some blood and guts, is not that awful terrible. So I feel this film, if someone is a, you know, they want to watch something kind of spooky and fall-ish, around the Halloween season, this is definitely something to check out if you don't want a lot of scares and you don't want to feel too awful creeped out. Now, the movie does have some scares. I'm not saying it's completely void of scares. Most of what it depends on is stuff like, you know, uh, very horrific looking scenes, things that kind of throw you a little bit off balance and makes you feel a little uneasy. So if you're okay with stuff like that, then all right, go into this movie, check it out. It's a really good, you know, just around fall-ish kind of film. The last thing I want to talk about is the standout performance of this film, and that is definitely from Max Van Cito, the person who plays our devil character in this film. He gives a really cool, different look at the the devil, or evil man, whatever you want to say, demonic, possessed, possessed creature, whatever you want to call him. He does a fantastic job playing this role, and what I like about him is, is he plays like this, like, you know, kindly old man who's like, oh, I just need a simple favor, nothing too awful, deadly. So if you're someone who's just looking for a fun, not too awful scary, kind of Halloween-y movie to watch right around the holiday time, this is definitely going to be your jam if you can put up with the negative sides that I mentioned. The one thing I want to close on with this movie is this is the kind of film that is ripe, I mean ripe, for a remake, reboot, reimagining, whatever you want to call it, reinterpretation of the book, the source material. But this is the kind of stuff that I keep saying to Hollywood, please, please, remake a movie like this because the bones of this film are solid. There's some good shit here, guys, that could make a really good, solid, psychological horror film. Something that could really, you know, mess with your mind. And I love that kind of stuff. I could see somebody, you know, I, I don't know, leave a comment down below, leave some comments, let me know some people that you think could direct a film like this and make a really good reboot, reimagining, whatever you want to call it, a re-re-re, whatever. <laughs> if you have some ideas of directors, actors for the main characters, go ahead and leave a comment, let's have a conversation and talk about these things. Alright, so if you're looking for this movie, unfortunately, it's not the easiest to find right now. I did find it for rent on Prime, but the other thing you might have to do is go hunt your, maybe, uh, uh, Goodwill or your local used movie or media location, because the only other place you can find it besides Prime, you can purchase it digitally on some other platforms, but you also have the out-of-print DVD, I believe this was pressed back in 2003, at least that's when I think I bought it. And 
And <laughs> there's also a Blu-ray, I want to say it was put out in 2015-ish, and it's got some special features on it and such, but I'm not 100% sure on that Blu-ray. Now, if you're a media collector like myself, don't worry, guys. These are not costly out-of-print media. I know some of them can get really up there, but this wasn't that great of a film, so it's not really... You know what I'm saying. Okay, guys. Well, that's all I got for you today. So if you liked what you saw here today, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell for notifications and give me the old thumbs up so I know you like what you're seeing. And if there's one more thing you can do, folks, that is keep watching movies. You know I'm gonna.